So you can get 1 over 14. This one, um, we could cancel off the 4 out of each. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. What can we take out of the 3 and the 9? 3. Now if there was something we could take out of the top and the bottom directly above each other, we could do that as well, right? It's not just across from each other. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so we get 1 times 1, which is 1, over 1 times 3, which is 3. All right. So that's multiplying fractions. When we multiply rationals, there's an extra catch because we don't just have our numbers in simplified form already where we can cancel. So what we're going to have to do is factor each of the numerators and denominators. Once we have them factored, we want to state the MPV, so what the denominator can't be, right? Just like we did for simplifying. Then we cancel off after we state our MPVs, and then we can multiply it. So these two can go in either order. They're not set where you have to multiply first and then simplify. You can simplify first, then multiply, which is what I like to do personally. So the very first thing we have to do when multiplying and dividing is simplify all of the numerators and all the denominators first by factoring or GCF. So x plus 1, there's nothing I can do to it. So I'm just going to rewrite it as a bracket. So I'm going to, that's number one. Number two is x squared minus 5x plus 6. I can factor that, right? And it's just product sum factoring. So I have x squared, number two, I like organizing them. x squared minus 5x plus 6. And I say what times what equals 6, 1 times 6. What plus what equals negative 5. What multiplies to give me 6 and adds to give me negative 5? Yeah. Negative 2 and negative 3. And if you draw the blanks out, you're going to realize that if you say um, negative 6 and 1, it doesn't work. Okay? Because if you use negative 6 and 1, you'd actually get negative 6, not positive 6. So negative 2 and negative 3. Now, because it has a plus 1 in front of the x squared, you can go right to brackets, and you can say x minus 2, x minus 3. And I'm going to go replace this one with x minus 2, x minus 3. Now, the time symbol, the multiplication symbol in between, I like writing it as a closed dot instead. If not, people start getting the x's mixed the, up with the multiplication symbol. So I just write it as a dot instead x minus 2, is there anything I can do to that? No, so I just rewrite it in brackets. Because it's attached by a subtraction sign, it's connected. So you have to put it in its own bracket. And then x squared minus 4x plus 4. Go off to the side. So we're going to say what times what equals 4, what plus what equals negative 4. Anyone know what times what equals positive 4, what plus what equals negative 4? Mm -hmm. Negative 2 and negative 2. Can I just go right ahead to brackets or do I have to do decomp? I can go right to brackets because I have a 1 in front of the x squared. If I have a negative 1 in front of the x squared, I either have to take the negative 1 out or I have to do decomp. You can only go right to brackets if it's a positive 1. So x minus 2, x minus 2. And I always leave them expanded. I will only put them together after if they don't cancel off. And this is equal to because this whole multiplication of rationals is equal to this whole multiplication of rationals. So we have to remember to put equal signs. Now, I know people get um, extremely happy because they can see the stuff that's going to cancel, but you don't um, cancel until you state your non-permissible values. And you state your non-permissible values always for the denominators. So we have x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 2. Do we have to state x minus 2 and find the MPV for it three times? No, once we state the MPV for something and it happens again, you don't have to repeat it. So you can say restrictions 
or you can say non-permissible values or NPVs. They're the same thing and can be used interchangeably. It's just a restriction on the variable or a non-permissible value to the variable. So we have x minus 2 can't equal 0 and we have x minus 3 can't equal 0. So x can't equal 2 and x can't equal 3, right? When you move, when you add the 3 over and you add the 2 over. So our MPVs are going to be x can't equal 2 comma 3. And then I box them so that they're easy to find. And the question on the test could just be what are the non-permissible values, right? I don't even have to ask you to solve this or determine the multiplication. You're not solving it because solving means finding out what the heck the variable equals, right? x equals something. And we're not getting x equals, so we're not solving. So what can I cancel off? An x minus 2 for an x minus 2. One for one. So I could take this one off for this one, or this one off for this one, or this one off for this one, but I can't um, take more than one off because I only have one on the top, right? So it's one for one canceling. Now I could have canceled this one and this one on this bottom over here and this one on this top. As long as any uh, factors along the top, it can cancel anything that's on the bottom. Anything in the numerator can cancel anything in the denominator. Okay? So can anything else cross off? No. Can I take this x off for this x? No. Because these are attached. The only way this x plus 1 is going anywhere is if there is an x plus 1 on the bottom. And if you have your phones out, please put them away so that you don't get messed up as to what you're doing. So x plus 1 on the top over x minus 3 on the bottom. And now I have x minus 2 and I have two of them, so I can rewrite it as x minus 2 squared. Or I could write it as x minus 2 times x minus 2 and you're not wrong. But they'll always put them together and simplify it. Okay? I want you guys to try the second one, please. All right, so the top is 4x squared minus 25 is a difference of squares because when we take the square root of 4x squared, we get 2x. When we take the square root of 25, we get 5, and they have a different sign in between. So when we square root them and they're perfect squares and they have a different sign in between, then it's a difference of squares. So you get 2x in the front of each bracket, 5 at the back of each bracket, and opposite signs, so plus or minus or minus plus. It doesn't matter which one comes first, just that they're opposite signs. So on the top we have 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. The bottom we have to do decomp. I'll label it 2. So we get 2x squared minus 13x plus 20. So we're doing what times what equals 40, what plus what equals negative 13, and it's going to be negative 8 and negative 5. So we have to replace our middle with that. So we get 2x squared minus 8x minus 5x plus 20. Does it matter if I put the 5 first? Does it matter if I put the 5 first? No. Take out a 2x, yeah, because you do 20 times 2. Yeah. x minus 4, take out a negative 5, and it's x minus 4. We get 2x minus 5 and x minus 4. Once again, the multiplication symbol, I'm going to use a dot. And then x minus 4 is just x minus 4. Can't do anything to it. And then on the bottom, I can take out a 2, and I'm left with 2x plus 5. Now, I have to state my non-principal values or my restrictions for anything that's in the denominator. before I cancel. Always state restrictions before you cancel. So 2x minus 5 can't equal 0. x minus 4 can't equal 0. 
2 can't equal 0, but it doesn't have a variable, so it'll never equal 0 with the 2. And then 2x plus 5 can't equal 0. So I get 2x can't equal 5, x can't equal 5 halves, x can't equal 4, 2x can't equal negative 5, divide by that 2 and x can't equal negative 5 halves. And then like I've said before, I always just put them together. So I'd say x can't equal plus or minus 5 halves, because you can put them together as 1, and then 4. And I box them so they're easy to find. Then we say, what can we cancel? So what's common on the top and on the bottom? Right? The 2x minus 5s. Yep. Yeah, as long as it's in the numerator and in the denominator, so the top and the bottom, you can cancel it no matter where it is. Anything else? Yep. Jade, what can you cancel off? I know you. The x minus 4s. Now, this is where people go wrong. They tell me that the, and we need an equal sign, sorry. They tell me that the answer is 2. It's 1 over 2. Because every time you cancel one of these, this is actually just 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, over 1 times 1 times 2 times 1, which is 2. The only time you can drop that 1 off is if it's in the denominator, right? So remember that the quotient of identical factors is 1. If all the factors in the numerator cancel, the numerator is still 1. If the denominator cancels, the denominator will be 1, but you, can, you don't have to write it. It's only for the numerator. Okay, let's flip over. So we're doing division. Now, division um, freaks people out a little bit, but really it's just one step away from multiplication. So some people say flip and kiss. Some people say invert and multiply what you're dividing by. All you need to know is that the second half, whatever follows behind, the division sign gets flipped. And then you can multiply. So basically it's one step away from multiplication. So if we were doing um, dividing of fractions, we'd go a quarter times 3 over 1. We only flip what follows the division sign. Okay? We keep what's in front of it the same. Nothing can cancel, so I just multiply straight up. 1 times 3, 3. 4 times 1, 4. Done. That's just a division as well. So in grade 12 and in grade 11, you'll see things like this where it's division over a division. It looks ridiculously complicated, but it's actually not. This doesn't look complicated. This looks ridiculously complicated. So you'll get trig proofs in grade 12 where you'll have a fraction over a fraction. And what I always say to you guys to do first is write them out sideways. Don't leave it like this. This is just 2 thirds divided by 5 6. So the very first thing you want to do is go 2 thirds divided by 5 6. Okay? Which is just 2 thirds times 6 over 5. So if you write it sideways, it's not nearly as bad. So 2 thirds times 6 over 5. We can take a 3 out of each of these. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And we're left with 4 over 5. Or you could have went 6 times 2 is 12 over 15 and then reduced it from there. Same thing. Okay? So with dividing rationals, there's only one extra step. Flip and multiply. And your non-permissible values have an extra step. You have to state NPVs for anything that's in the denominator or will be, right? Because your denominator can't equal zero. That's my rule to you, correct? Your denominator can't equal zero. Well, when you're dividing, these are in the denominator, correct? But our next step is to invert and multiply what you're dividing by, or just flip and multiply. So these were in the denominator, and now the C moved to the denominator. So we have to state the NPVs for it as well. 
Okay, we had A, B, C, D, then we multiplied and it flipped to D over C. So it's in the denominator now. So we have to state MPVs for division. You have to state MPVs for everything but the top left. That's all you have to remember. So we have to flip it and multiply, and we have an extra MPV spot. We have to state it for the C as well. So when you're dividing, no denominator can equal zero. So your non-permissible values would be B, C, and D can't equal zero. So basically, you have to state non-permissible values for everything but A. OK? So that's really your extra step. Flip it, multiply it, and then state the extra MPV. So for this one, they want us to state the non-permissible values of all the variables. So we have to state the non-permissible values for everything in the denominator and for this top right. Why? For the numerator on the right. Why do we have to state it for this as well? Because when we flip it, it's going to move to the denominator. OK? So this C and this D are by themselves multiplied, so I'm going to put them in their own brackets because each of them is going to give me a separate MPV. Anything that's not attached by um, addition and subtraction signs goes in its own bracket because it's not sewn together. So let's start stating non-permissible values. We have C can't equal 0. We have D can't equal 0. We have G can't equal 0. We have h minus 6 can't equal 0. And then we also have the numerator on the right. e minus 2 can't equal 0. And f plus 1 can't equal 0. Hmm? So basically, the only thing we don't have to state it for is a and b, because they're in the top left. They will always be in the top left. They do not move. Right? They will never be in the denominator. They will always be in the numerator. Then we solve them out. C can't equal 0. Done. D can't equal 0. Done. G can't equal 0. Done. Add my 6 over. H can't equal 6. Now it's done. Add my 2 over. B e can't equal 2. Subtract my 1 over. F can't equal negative 1. OK? So now we could write this like this. C, D, G can't equal 0. H can't equal 6. D e can't equal 2. F can't equal negative 1. Oops. So here, determine each quotient and identify any non-permissible values of the variable. So all that we're going to do is what? Compare it to multiplication. Flip it, multiply it, and state all the MPVs for everything but the numerator on the left. So try it out. So the first thing I always do is flip and multiply. X plus 3 just stays X plus 3. X minus 3 stays X minus 3, but I put them in brackets because they're attached together. Times by 4X minus 12, which is together, and X. The only thing I have to do something with is the 4X minus 12, and I can just take a GCF of 4 out. So it equals X plus 3 over X minus 3 times 4 x minus 3 over x. What were you asking? Yeah. And then what you have to do is state non-permissible values before you cancel anything, right? And they're for everything but this x plus 3 on the left. So x can't equal 3 because of this one, 0 because of this one, the 4 has no problem, and x can't equal 3 because of the top um, up here, but it doesn't matter because we've already stated it. So these are my MPVs. The only thing that can cancel is the x minus 3s. Some people want to cancel this x with this x. Remember, 
the only way that this x plus 3 is going anywhere is if there is an x plus 3 in the denominator, which there is not. So your answer is 4 x plus 3 over x, and that is as simplified as it can go. And you have that flip over. I want you to try the next one at the top. First thing I'm going to do, x minus 7 stays, x plus 4 stays, times x squared minus x minus 20 moves to the top, x squared minus 2x minus 15 moves to the bottom. And you'll have to factor those. So I'm going to label them 1 and 2 so that I can do them off to the side. 1, x squared minus x minus 20. What times what equals negative 20? Because it's 1 times negative 20. What plus what equals negative 1? Negative 5 and positive 4. Can I go right to brackets or do I have to do decomp? Right to brackets because I have a what in front of the x squared? A 1 or an uno. <laughs> so x minus 5, x minus x plus 4. So on the top up here, I'm going to get x minus 5, x plus 4. And then over here, I have x minus 7 over x plus 4. And then I do number 2. x squared minus 2x minus 15. What times what equals negative 15? What plus what equals negative 2? Negative 5 and 3. And once again, we can go right to brackets because we have a 1 in front, right? Don't have to do decomp. x minus 5, x plus 3. What do we have to do next before we can cancel? NPVs, <laughs> or NVPs as some people call them, but they're not. NPVs are restrictions, right? So we have x plus 4, so x can't equal negative 4. We have x minus 5, so x can't equal 5 if you solve these all out. x plus 3, so x can't equal negative 3. But we also do the tops too, right? 5, so x can't equal 5. We've already stated it. x plus 4, so x can't equal 4. Negative 4, we've already stated it. So we have all of our MPVs. There isn't any more. They should be equal to each other because that's equal to that, equals equal to that. <laughs> what can we do now? Cancel. <laughs> we can cancel. Okay, what can we cancel? Okay. <laughs> And we're left with? <laughs> you guys should start teaching. You're just so clear and concise <laughs> with your speaking. Okay, that's it. Can't make it any prettier than that. Please do not cancel off the X's. I cry big tears when you do that because you did all this work. You got it right, and then you annihilate it by trying to simplify more. You guys make that noise, and then you're going to give the quiz tomorrow, and you'll be like, it, all the answers are like three, like a daily quiz. And you'll get all the answers, you'll be like three, seven, two. And I was just like, ah. And people try and solve them all the time, too. Like they set them equal to zero and do some work once we do solving. No, just that. That's it. <laughs> okay. So this one throws people off because they're not sure whether they should flip the entire deal over here or what they should do. My. Yeah, it's, sure. Okay, so um, my statement was anything that follows the division sign, you flip and multiply. Anything that follows directly behind the division sign, right? So all we're going to do is flip this and make it a multiplication. So we're going to say MPVs for this denominator, this denominator, this denominator, and the middle numerator because it's going to move to the denominator. I don't flip this at all. The, the last one, I don't flip at all. It didn't follow a division sign. It follows a multiplication sign. So it just stays nice. So 
our first step is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 times, which I'm going to flip it to a dot, x plus 10 over x squared minus 3x times 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. It does not change over x squared plus x. Okay? Now you're just going to factor, leave, leave, GCF, factor, GCF. Let's try it out. Okay, uh, the top, you'd have x squared plus 2x plus 1. What times what equals 1? What plus what equals 2? 1 and 1. And because there's 1 in front, I can go right to brackets. x plus 1, x plus 1. The bottom, 2x plus 1, just goes in its own brackets. Nothing you can do with it. x plus 10 just goes in its own brackets. So then you can take an x out, and you're left with x minus 3, and the x goes in its own brackets. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, you have to do decomp, because there's a 2 in front. What times what equals negative 6? What plus what equals negative 5? So you get 2x squared minus 6x plus 1x minus 3, negative 6 and 1. Then you group. Remember, you have to do decomp if there's not a positive 1 in front. You can't go right to brackets. So you get 2x, x minus 3. What can you take out of an x minus 3? A plus 1. That's it. x minus 3. So you get 2x plus 1. And x minus 3. And then we get, take out an x. Now watch yourself. When you take an x out, x squared divided by x, you're left with an x. Plus, x divided by x is 1. It doesn't just go away. Everyone drops that off. That's a common error. No. Negative 6x plus 1x should be what? No. Close, but no. Um, that's the common error because negative 2 and negative 3 is negative 5, which is true, but negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, not negative 6. So um, on a test, it's usually a 50-50 that people do that because, it's, because it does work out to the negative 5. Um, a lot of people do put negative 2 and negative 3, but it doesn't work out to the negative 6 that you need. So you need one of them to be positive and one of them to be negative. All right. So let me state non-permissible values. So that happens all the time. That's why you have to do the blanks just in case, because majority of the people probably did do that. Okay, so non-permissible values, you have to do this one, these, and the bottom over here. So this one here, 2x plus 1 can't equal 0, and then x plus 10 can't equal 0, because the middle numerator that was in the bottom, x can't equal 0 x minus 3 can't equal 0, x can't equal 0, we've already done, and then x plus 1 can't equal 0. So when we solve them all out, this 2x plus 1 becomes 2x can't equal negative 1, so x can't equal negative a half. This one's going to be x can't equal negative 10, this one's x can't equal 0 is already done, x can't equal 3, and x can't equal negative 1. So you go x can't equal negative 10, negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, and 3. I like listing them from low to high, just so that I know I have them all. 
And then we cross off anything that's common. So 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. Um, x plus 1, one of them for one of them. The x minus 3s. X plus 1, I do not have a matching X plus 1 anywhere on the bottom. I do not have an X plus 10 on the bottom, and no X is on the top. Like, if I had an X by itself, or an X squared, or an X cubed, or an X4, then I could cancel off some of the X's, but I don't. So I'm left with X plus 1 times X plus 10. And then I'm left with X times X on the bottom, or X squared. Because these can't cancel off, because they're both in the denominator. then that's your homework. Because you have to do multiplication and division.